If you're watching politics right now, you'd think that Donald Trump was literally doing nothing about the coronavirus. In fact, he's done negative things that have hurt everybody. And sure enough, it's all a lie. Yes, Democrats are lying about Donald Trump and the coronavirus. Don't take my word for it. How about the Associated Press fact check that says they are lying about what's going on with the CDC and Donald Trump? Man, I'm really annoyed that coronavirus is becoming something political because we should be taking it seriously as people get sick and many people die. And now you've got 700 people in New York that are under a voluntary quarantine with one person being tested. And this is what people post. Mini driver, as if I think her opinion is that important. But no, she's uh, she's influential enough. The perfect, if chilling, representation of this man's limitless ignorance and failure. The New Yorker with a picture of Trump with, a, with a, a mask over his eyes. Okay, now listen, there are things I think we can criticize Trump for when it comes to the coronavirus, but let me explain something to you. Personally, I think Trump's response to what's going on with the virus should be a little bit more stern and cons- uh, uh, he should be a little bit more alarmed, but I don't want him to be panicking, right? He's definitely trying to downplay things. Calm down, it's not, not gonna be that bad, the risk is low. All of these things are fair in that I think personally, first, Trump is concerned this is really, really bad for the economy, which is in turn bad for him. But also, he doesn't want to start a panic. In Australia, when their prime minister came out and said, pandemic warning, people went and raided stores and like bought a bunch of crazy stuff. And while you should be buying supplies for sure, there's a fine line between, or I shouldn't say a fine line, but it's hard to know exactly when you should or should not tell people to go out and panic. The CDC, of course, is saying panic. Trump is saying, calm down, it's going to be fine. And the reality is Trump is correct. It is absolutely going to be fine. But we are going to be facing some severe disruptions. That's what the CDC has said. You know, look, I I think the truth is usually closer to the middle. You know, Trump is going to downplay this for a lot of reasons. Democrats are going to hype it up like crazy for a lot of reasons. But we do have a real threat with the coronavirus. I can understand why why Trump would want to downplay it. And I can understand why Democrats would want to overhype it. But I think the Democrats' motivation for overhyping it is pure politics. And again, don't take my word for it. Take a look at this from the Associated Press. AP fact check. Democrats distort coronavirus readiness. Excellent. That's exactly what we need right now. Politicking and a distortion of the facts because you don't like the orange man and you want to win that election. This is disgusting to me. Look, you can claim that Trump is downplaying or distorting the facts on coronavirus and be critical of him. That's fine. But there's a legitimate reason why Trump might be doing that. As I stated, I think there's some political reasons there for sure. Trump's, you know, he's got this great economy under, you know, behind him, this mark, this great market count and a market value. And he's heading into an election with with awesome numbers. Now you're going to see people work is going to slow down supply chain disruption, and that could be bad for the president. However, disasters typically chaos, crisis can be good for a president. So to all the Trump people saying the Democrats are lying, trying to make Trump, you know, look bad by exaggerating the severity of the coronavirus. No, 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 no. If there's a fall on outbreak, it actually will make Trump look good. Or or at the very least, people are scared to vote out an incumbent when we're in a crisis because they think the change in, you know, administrations would be too disruptive. So this could really play into Trump's advantage. The bigger issue is the Democrats are trying to win by claiming Trump has done things he has not done. They are lying. If Trump comes out and says it's not that bad and there is some truth that he's trying to avoid a panic, I get that. I really, really do. We don't want to run on the banks. We don't want to run on supermarkets. We want people to be calm and collected, keep things, you know, turn along so we can work towards a a vaccine or a cure or whatever it is we do. Now we have this story from the AP. Let me let me let me let me read a little bit for you. The AP says Democratic presidential contenders are describing the federal infectious disease bureaucracy as rudderless and ill prepared for the coronavirus threat because of budget cuts and ham handed leadership by President Donald Trump. That's a distorted picture. For starters, Trump hasn't uh, succeeded in cutting the budget. Hey, not not for lack of trying. He's proposed cuts, but Congress ignored him and increased financing instead. The National Institutes of Health and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention aren't suffering from budget cuts that never took effect. A look at some of the Democratic remarks. Bloomberg says there's nobody here to figure out what the hell we should be we should be doing. 
and he's defunded. He's defunded Centers for Dis- Disease Control, CDC, so we don't have the organization we need. This is a very serious thing. Debate Tuesday night. Lie. Joe Biden. Comparing the Obama Biden administration with now, we increased the budget of the CDC. We increased the NIH bu- budget. He's wiped all that out. He's cut the funding for the entire effort. Lie. The facts. They're both wrong to say the agencies have seen their money cut. Bloomberg is repeating the false allegation in a new ad that states the U.S. is unprepared for the virus because of reckless cuts to the CDC. Trump's budgets have proposed cuts to public health only to be overruled by Congress, where there's strong bipartisan support for agencies such as the CDC and NIH. Instead, financing has increased. You want to criticize Trump for trying to do it? Please, please do so, because we do need a strong and robust CDC and NIH. But the Republicans in Congress, along with Democrats, have rejected what Trump wanted. It is a bipartisan effort to say no. And that's called checks and balances. Oops, hit a button. They say, indeed, the money that government disease detectives first tapped to fight the latest outbreak was a congressional fund crid for health emergencies. Some public health experts say a bigger concern than White House budgets is the steady erosion of a CDC grant program for state and local public health emergency preparedness. The front, line, uh, the front lines in detecting and battling new, new disease. But that decline was set in motion by a congression, congressional budget measure that predates Trump. The orange man is bad. Everything is his fault. Welcome to uh, the current state of politics. This is the last t- we, we do not need right now to be dealing with politicking over this. These people are despicable. This is why I hate politicians. I hate every single one. And I can certainly understand why people want to vote for Trump. You know, I often joke about how I'd love to be on the debate stage because I would just be yelling at all these people like, shut up, Bloomberg, you're lying. It's not true. Will someone please tell this man to get off the stage? He bought his way here anyway. But that's what he does. He goes on the debate stage. He lies. He's buying advertisements with lies. Is CNN going to complain now that Michael Bloomberg is lying in his advertisements? No, only the orange man. This is what I can't stand. There's no legitimate argument against what they don't like about him other than he's orange or his name is Drum for other stupid nonsense. They try and explain that the the problem with the border wall is that it's racist. It doesn't mean anything. You know, you want to talk about budget appropriation, fine, but he's within his rights to do what he's doing. The president wants to build a border fence and secure our borders. A lot of Americans agree with that. And he has the rights to secure funding to do it. The Supreme Court sided with him. He's doing it. You want to make a real argument about the expense and better ways to spend it? I'm absolutely listening, 100%. And they've talked about better technology, better security, better manpower, better uh, processing of asylees and all that stuff. And I'm like, that, that, I, I hear you. I really, really do. And then they go, but the wall is immoral and racist. And I'm like, that's, that, that's not an argument. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. I guess that works on low energy people who aren't really paying attention. And they're like, that's right. Trump is immoral. But then they, listen, They often try and say that Trump is lying because they purposefully will misrepresent things he said or done. And again, I think there's there 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 are many, many things for which you can criticize this man and even Obama and the people before him. But I'm sick and tired of having to read stories where it's like, oh, by the way, they're lying again. I get it. Trump lies. He certainly does. You can't deny it. Trump lies about stupid things and he's honest about, you know, other things. It's almost like he's saying the loud part quiet and the quiet part loud half the time. Like the, the famous incident when he's outside by the helicopter and the press asks him about Saudi Arabia and he's like, we're going to make so much money selling weapons to these guys, putting our troops over there. They pay well. And everyone like all these progressive anti-war people, like their jaws collectively dropped. Like he just he just came out and admitted it. But then he lies about really dumb things like, you know, cultural stuff. That's like people. I don't know. Let's read a little bit more. They say some public health ex- experts say a bigger concern than White House budgets is the steady erosion of a CDC. Oh, I'm sorry, I read, I read that already. The broader point about there being nobody here to coordinate the response sells short what's, uh, what's in place to handle an outbreak. The public health system has a playbook to follow for pandemic preparation, regardless of who is president or whether specific instructions are coming from the White House. Those plans were put into place in anticipation of another flu pandemic, but are designed to work for any respiratory airborne, uh, respiratory borne disease. Among the health authorities overseeing the work, are Dr. Anne Shuchat, CDC's principal deputy director and a veteran of previous outbreaks, and Dr. Anthony Fauci, NIH's infectious disease chief, who has advised six presidents. The CDC's response has been excellent, as it has been in the past, said John Auerbach, 
president of the Nonpartisan Trust for America's Health, which works with government at all levels to improve the nation's response to high risk health crises. Some Democrats have charged that Trump decimated the nation's public health leadership. But our Bach said CDC's top scientific ranks have remained stable during the past three years. Will the preparations be enough? All right, I'm going to stop right now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to first going to say we're here reading the Associated Press being like, by the way, the Democrats are lying about everything. They don't have anything substantive to offer. So they do scandals. They accuse Trump of doing things he didn't do. They need to make him look bad by any means necessary. The economy is great. People are working. People are happy. People are satisfied with their lives. So what do they have to offer the American people? Well, a crisis rears its ugly head and they pop out and say, oh, but Trump did this. It's not true. And I feel bad for the people who believe it. I'm going to now do something that I don't normally do, but I've been doing in the past couple of videos about the coronavirus because I do think it's important. And I'll be completely honest with everybody. Check out this website, preparewithtim.com. You can see they got this cute little picture of me from a couple years ago. You, 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 if you've watched all of my coronavirus videos, you know I've only done this maybe like three times, but I think it's, it's actually to a point now where I think it's serious enough to actually warrant me giving a shout out. First, being completely honest, this video will be demonetized. Every single video where I mentioned coronavirus, coronavirus demonetized completely. So I know that doing these stories and talking about them is, you know, it's not an advantage for me and my, my business. But this is actually something I think is a good idea to do because I've, I've done this as well. I've bought emergency food and water, not because I think the world is ending. Don't let anyone, you know, freak you out or try, you know, because we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna recover. There's a big market sell off. I think everything's going to be fine. But, you know, people are doing it. The world is not ending. However, storms happen, hurricanes happen, earthquakes happen. You know, sometimes the, there's a uh, stores run out of supply, supply chain disruption. We are looking at a potential supply chain disruption uh, in the United States. We're already seeing it around the world. We're going to have supplies disrupted where we are at home. And before it's too late, pick up something like this, because I have, I have. So this is preparewithtim.com. They've got emergency food supplies. And one of the reasons I decided to start, you know, shouting these people out is, and again, full disclosure, it, it does help support my channel when you buy from preparewithtim.com, but also because I noticed how the volume, their, their uh, demand for their food is up 100 times normal. And there's a potential six to eight week delay in rare cases. So they say they can get this stuff to you really, really quickly. But look, man, the worst case scenario, if you buy some of this food is you eat it. That's about it. And so long as we're dealing with an escalating, you know, crisis, I think it's really important to give them a shout out and let you know it's available. And, you know, whether you go with them or anybody else, I really do hope you guys pick up some supplies and take this stuff seriously. Let's get back to what's going on with the news, though. Uh, so the link will be in the description below. But I, but I uh, yeah, let's, let's just let's just get back to the news and start uh, start reading. They ask, will the preparations be enough? One of the lessons learned in prior uh, crises, such as the anthrax attacks, is not to offer false assurances when scientists have questions about the illness. The CDC, for example, can accurately test for the virus, but has struggled to get working test kits to state health departments. That's key if there's a need to rapidly increase the number of tests being performed. The U.S. closed borders to travelers from China to buy time as preparations began. But classically, that's not the way you address an outbreak, Fauci told the Associated Press this week. If you do it for a very limited period of time, temporarily until you can get things in order in your own country, it could have some benefit. But in general, the concept of closing borders, you cannot do that for an extended period of time. But with infections now in much of the world, one of the questions for U.S. policymakers is whether it's time to modify any of those borders or travel restrictions. Well, I don't know. I have no idea what should be done. I'm just sick and tired of the politi politicking, uh, po politicking around this. I don't care who you like and don't like. I don't care if you're happy with Schumer, Pelosi, Nadler, or anybody else. I care if they're going to sit down and say, okay, let's put these things aside and make sure we're going to save some lives here. Right now in New York City, 700 people are placed under voluntary quarantine. I'm about an hour and a half, two hours drive from New York City. It's actually probably an hour and a half, but traffic is so bad. Once you get to the tunnel, it's a nightmare. It takes another half an hour to get in the city. We're really close, me and, and, and my friends uh, at my house. And so there's a real concern that if they're voluntarily quarantined, asking people to voluntarily quarantine themselves, 700 people, and they're testing one person, I think there's a strong likelihood that there's going to be some wild cases in New York already. We've seen it in San Francisco. I think the safe prediction is that when the next, in the next week or two, we're going to see people coming down with coronavirus. 
and the mortality rate is decently high. Some people have said it's like a flu that can give you pneumonia and that's very dangerous. Several young people have lost their lives. Young people. Government uh, uh, authority figures in Iran lost their lives. Italy has a major outbreak. So I'm trying to figure out at what point we decide we're going to start bunkering down. We're going to we're not going to go out. And I think the time is is now. Let me let me let me stress. There's there's a there's a difficult point that uh, for for in in situations like this where you're going to have people who are more concerned about their social perception, how they're viewed by other people and the media instead of their survivability. Some some people you know, go one, go, go extreme in the other direction and they build a bunker and they buy 30 years worth of food and they do not care what any, anyone thinks of them. They're more concerned about themselves. I can respect that. If you're going to put, you know, how you look to your neighbors over your own chance of survival, then don't come a knock in when you run out of food or water. A lot of people right now have a fear that if they actually go out and do things, take care of themselves, they're going to be viewed unfavorably by society. Well, I'll tell you what, if your friends make fun of you because you bought one of those food supply kits, then when they come knocking, begging for food, you can tell them like, hey, man, you had your chance. But more importantly, everything I've been saying, there's already been attempts at shaming everyone who's talked about it. I'm not kidding. USA Today ran an op ed where they're talking about right wing conspiracy theories over coronavirus and all this other insanity. You, you also do have a lot of Trump supporters who think it's a being overhyped by the Democrats. Don't let anybody shame you. I don't care, dude. You can call me whatever you want. And I'm going to sit back. And when all this blows over, I'm going to have some extra rice and beans for taco night. That's the worst case scenario. And that's what I'm actually projecting. That's my prediction. I think this will get bad, but we saw it with swine flu. This is, this is predict, uh, they're predicting this to be substantially worse. I think it'll disrupt markets. We're seeing a major sell-off. What's the worst that's going to happen, man? Y'all need to chill out. Uh, There's a lot of, you know, a lot of people overreact. Don't do it. Just, just sit back and relax and take the, take the vacation. You know, I'm no fan of vacations. I'm no fan of being for, you know, of a forced time off. I got sick in December. I lost my voice and I hated it. But you know what? You got to learn to choose your battles. Go with the flow when you have to. And if we're going to deal with some supply, supply disruption, well, then go out, pick up some, some gear, pick up some supplies, and then chill out, read some books, play some games. Look, we got the internet, man. You don't even need to leave your house anymore. And so that's, what I, that's, that's the point I'm trying to get to. When we're hearing that New York, Massachusetts, San Francisco, there's potential uh, virus cases here. It's spreading. We can't stop it. I'm like, okay, maybe we just reduce the amount of time we spend going outside and going to the shops and stuff. We've got a ton of food and stuff we, we've bought. We got taco night ready for the next t- couple weeks. And it's not the apocalypse. It's just going to be, if you don't want to get sick because people are sick, you know, don't spend too much time. So maybe we won't go bowling, which is, which is a bummer because bowling's fun. Um, maybe we won't go play billiards or pool or whatever. Maybe we're going to have to just play some World of Warcraft or something online. But hey, what's the big deal? I will say there's something really interesting with how technology has afforded this, afforded us this opportunity. Back in the day, you had, you'd you'd be, you'd be really, really bored with no internet. You'd be sitting there like what's happening. I need a newspaper and you'd need human contact to actually get more information. Now I just go on the internet. So we can sit back, play video games. We can hang out in the backyard, fire up the grill, have some, you know, have some burgers, make some tacos or whatever, and, you know, just chill out, wait for things to blow over. The question is, you're not going to know when is the right time to start limiting your outings. And maybe you shouldn't. I don't know. I'll tell you what, though. I'm going to do it. And I don't care if you want to make fun of me because I'm saying I'm not going to go to Cheesecake Factory tonight. All right. I'm going to I'm going to stay home and we're going to cook some some nice home cooked meals that are going to be healthier, by the way. And we're going to keep an eye on what's going on because this thing is spreading. I don't 80 percent of people have a mild case. You're going to be fine. But until we you know, until we know for sure, I have no problem being cautious. I have absolutely no problem doing that. Whether you want to or not is entirely up to you. Keep in mind, you know, you'll probably be fine. You know, this is it's a big news play. The media loves a shocking story. We'll see what happens. You can already see that the, the Democrats are taking advantage of it, trying to blame Trump for something he did not do. I think it's fair to point out he tried. Yeah, criticize the guy. But that's what checks and balances are for. So we got a Congress. Yes, Democrats included. Bravo. Good Democrats and Republicans with bipartisan efforts to maintain the budget of the CDC. We're good. Let's 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 chill out. Let's remain calm. Go to the shop if you haven't yet, because I'll tell you what, where I'm at in Philly, they're talk, what they're talking about with with New York. I'm telling you, man, we're going to get close to a point where I think we're close to the point already 
But, but if they start getting several people in New York City who are infected, and then it starts jumping into the tens of thousands like it did in China within a month, you're not going to be able to go to the store. So I don't think, you know, I'll, I'll tell you this. On my end, I don't think we have nearly enough supplies to last months because, you know, I don't, I don't know. There, there, there is something I think maybe going too far, but maybe that would be smart. I don't know. But we certainly have a decent amount of food to last us several weeks, maybe even a month. And that's just because a lot of canned foods last forever anyway. So it's like a lot of the food that we already have will last us for a while. We just went out and bought some extra stuff in water. I don't think we're going to be locked down for months. I think it'll be like, well, it, it, it could be because, you know, swine flu went to like, what, 212 days or something like that. So, you know, I, I really don't know what, what's right for you. You have to make that decision on your own. And so the only, the only, the only things I can really say to wrap this up, because I'm going a little long, I do not care for the politicking. And I already have disdain for these Democratic candidates. I don't know if my, <laughs> my perception of them could get any lower than it is. So take that for what it is. Um, if you're concerned about how you appear to other people, well, then you do you. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of you know my friends, my family, what I got to do. And you can call me all the names in the book. Don't care. I got, a, I got, a, I got a, a nice backyard. We're gonna sit in the patio, fire up the little fire pit, cook some burgers, and we're gonna hang out and have, uh, have you know, friend night or whatever. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel, and I will see you all then.